Hi, and welcome to my channel, where we talk about true crime and anything else I want to talk about that day. So today, what I would like to talk about is the case of a young girl, she was 15, who was trafficked. I'm sure you've probably heard about it, but the more of us that talk about it, the more it gets out there, the better it is. Okay, so on April 8th of 2022, a 15-year-old girl and her father go to Dallas to watch a Mavericks game. A lot of people there. It's an arena. You know, there's, there's spectators. There's workers. I'm sure there's security. You would think that people are safe, right? So the father allows his 15 year old to go to the bathroom, which is a completely normal thing. We're not talking about a seven year old here. We're talking about a 15 year old adolescent. So she goes to the bathroom and she doesn't come back. And so the father starts to get a little concerned and rightfully so. And so he, uh, reaches out to people there at the stadium and, and the Dallas Police Department. Now, the Dallas Police Department say to this man, um, you know, this, unless it's a kidnapping or abduction case, it's treated as a runaway, and you'll want to go back to where you reside and report this. Um, and that was North Richland Hills. So... The father drove all night and made the report at North Richland Hills at about 1 a.m. And they said, this isn't for us. This happened in Dallas. This is a Dallas case. You need to go back. And I'm sure at this point, the father was frustrated and panicked and um, all sorts of really bad negative emotions, not to mention the guilt I mean, although it's not his fault, we're talking about a 15 year old girl. It's a normal thing for, you know, a teenager to go to the bathroom. Now, the reports say that the girl was not snatched, per se, that she was coerced, that um, somehow they convinced her to leave the stadium with them. There's not a whole lot of information on that yet. Um, and so she she left she walked out with them uh, allegedly now let's take a minute and 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 look at the difference between um uh, kidnapping and the difference between abduction so you would think that they were the same um however they're not so I found this definition on a website called jaredjustice.com. Uh, he's, it's an attorney website. And so I'm going to read to you the difference between kidnapping and abduction. So in the most, most basic sense, kidnapping means taking another person against their will to an undisclosed location. There's no minimum age for kidnapping. Um, adults as well as children that are taken against their will are considered kidnap. There's lots of reasons why you may kidnap someone, ransom or another future crime. Um, you know, we've all heard stories of people being kidnapped. Now, abduction, well, I guess, so what this says is child abduction, custodial interference. Abduction is called a few things across the nation. Um, and I guess where this attorney is located, which seems to be Oregon, it's called custodial interference. And basically it, abduction refers to a person taking away another person by persuasion, fraud, or open force. Uh, it also specifically means that the abductor interfered with a family relationship, such as a child getting taken from their parent. Uh, yeah, that sounds like what happened to me. Um, I don't understand why the police even thought runaway. Why would a child go to a basketball game and then run away? Okay, that might be a dumb question. I guess if, if a child had a legitimate reason for wanting to get away from their family, that might be a good way to do it. 
but a little bit of investigation into the family life. And I feel like cops would be able to determine or investigators would be able to determine if this child actually ran away um, or if she was abducted. So the, the Jared Justice website goes on to say that the key differences between abduction and kidnapping is that kidnapping means that the victim does not need to be a child. Um, however, um, I guess in Oregon and maybe other places, if they're under 14 years of age, the, the perpetrator will receive harsher punishments. Uh, it, it also says most people charged with abduction or custodial interference are members of a child's family, whereas kidnappers can be anyone. Um, although I really kind of feel like this was definitely abduction, at least by these definitions. Okay, so um, she goes missing. The, the father reaches out to the various police departments, um, and there's no... They don't really help him. Uh, so he's put in touch with some anti-trafficking um, organizations. And quite an amazing thing happened. So the abductors took photos of this child and put her online. And these organizations were able to find her using facial recognition software, um, which is phenomenal i mean i'm so glad that they found her uh i wish it hadn't happened but it it did and i'm really glad that they found her because a lot of times y'all victims of human trafficking never come back um i i don't know what happens to them but i could assume that once their value has diminished at least in the eyes of the perpetrator they probably dispose of them um unfortunately Okay, so um, they find her. 11 days later, they find her in a hotel in Oklahoma called the Extended Stay America Hotel. Now, this hotel is being accused of putting profits over the safety of the community because these people apparently rented, like, multiple rooms and were doing who knows what with these victims out of these rooms. And from what I've read, people seem to think that the hotel had a pretty good idea of what was going on and they turned a blind eye. So I really hope that uh, they are held accountable as well. Um, it's just so sad and it's so heartbreaking what happened. Um, so apparently as well, Dallas is the number one hotspot for human trafficking. Okay, now this is really going to piss you off. Dallas is the number one place for human trafficking in the United States, according to what I have seen. So you would think that they have, you know, a special task force or special unit or something to help combat this problem. Well, apparently they did. And then defund the police happened and their vice unit was the first to go. So it's been two years with no vice unit. But I promise you, I promise you, uh, the coup did not deter people from human trafficking, innocent people, innocent victims. The Dallas Police Department now has their vice unit back. Um, however, they're really lacking in funding. So they have reached out to several organizations or, or at least one asking for help to write a grant proposal to get funding to help prove that there is a problem, not to help deal with the problem, but to help prove there is a problem because the many victims that go missing aren't enough proof. Make that make sense. Um, I, I don't understand it. I can't wrap my head around it. Anyway, so this young girl has been found. There's been eight suspects arrested. Um, and I don't know a whole lot about the suspects. I haven't gotten that far yet. However, I do know that this is rare. Less than 1% of human trafficking cases end like this. And I don't want there to be a perception of, 
oh, well, if someone gets human trafficked, at least they'll be found by facial recognition software. That is not the case. These idiots just put her online and that's how they were found. Um, but that's usually not the case. So to wrap this all up, just be aware, be careful. If you have someone in your family who is, I don't even want to say young because it seems like people of all ages these days are getting snatched. Um, I don't know what the criteria is, but you know, I, I'm assuming they do look for young females. I'm sure males get trafficked too. I know they do. Um, so if you have someone in your home or in your family rather that might not be able to defend themselves in this types of situations, talk to them about this, um, educate them, give them the tools needed to remove themselves from this type of situation. Talk to your children. Y'all, these people are getting really, really crafty with the way they're out here snatching these people. I have heard stories from, you know, leaving things on people's cars and when the person gets out to get it, that's when they grab them um, to this case where they simply talked her out of the arena. Oh, something else I wanted to talk about, too, was and, and the implications of this, the more I think about it, it just goes so deep. So what they're saying is the person or persons, I think there was just one, that actually went in and made contact with this child used a black market ticket. Okay, so let's dissect that for a minute. Let's say you're working at uh, a ticket booth and someone shows up with a ticket that doesn't scan. We've all seen it. You have your ticket, you can show it on your phone, whatever. It doesn't scan. It, it's, it's like not a real ticket you're going to turn them away, right? Well, this person wasn't turned away. So who let them in and why? Why did they let them in? Are they in on it? These operations are becoming so much more sophisticated and it's not, it, it used to be thought of as, you know, someone pulls up in a van, grabs the victim and is gone. It's so much more sophisticated than that these days. I mean, they plan these things out from start to finish. So we have to be dil diligent and vigilant and make sure we let our loved ones and family members know, hey, the threat is real. This isn't a movie. And these are the things that you can do to help yourself. So I'm going to conclude this by saying if you have information about someone that has been trafficked or suspicions, please, please, please let the authorities know. Uh, you can contact the National Human Trafficking Organization at 1-888-373-7888 and let them know what you've seen. Let them know what you think. Let them know what you've heard. Any little tip, you never know what is going to be the tip that breaks a case wide open. So yeah, that's that's that one. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty unfortunate. And my heart goes out to this young lady and her family members and everyone who has been traumatized by this. And I really hope that she is strong enough to weather this storm. Um, I can't begin to imagine the pain, the heartache, fear, all of these negative emotions that this family has endured and will continue to endure.